Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. Hope you're doing well. Two days before Christmas, a week and two days away from the the new year beginning. So kind of an exciting time for everybody. And for those who don't know, we broadcast from the mall. So it's even exciting because watching the shoppers come and go. It's oh, yeah. Kind of fun. I didn't realize how busy it was already. Usually this time of the morning, it's... Not this busy, but like apparently the parking lot is really filled, right? Right. Uh, see, I get here before the parking lot has anybody in it, usually. Yeah. <laughs> but this morning, I got here at quarter to six. There was already at least five, six cars in this side of the mall. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Father uh, Robert C. Cormier is on the phone, also known as Father Bob. He is up, uh, I don't know if he's there right now, but he's a priest of the Archdiocese of Newark, New Jersey. So <laughs> sort of kind of from uh, an area I'm familiar with. He is obviously a theologian. I would, I would think most priests are. He's a teacher. He's the president of something called Project Live, a leading institution for the care of the mentally ill, a spiritual director of Radio Immaculata, where he has a weekly radio program, so he's familiar with what we do as well, uh, and happens to be a pilot and an author. And it's the, it's the author part that we'll probably focus on the most. His book is called Better Than We Believed. How optimistic is that, huh? How to apply the vision that is faith to the struggle that is life. Fascinating topic. Let me take no more time and allow him to speak. Father Cormier, Father Bob, rather. Good morning, Father. How you doing? I'm great, Father Larry. Thank you for having me. I love calling somebody Father. Yeah. Good morning, Father. It sounds so godly, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> uh, are you in Newark right now? Actually, I'm in Jersey City, where I'm assigned, which is the territory of the Archdiocese of Newark. So I am in Newark in some sense, and in Jersey City, as far as the audience is concerned. Oh, okay. Um, better than we believe. I love what that seems to be saying. Um, tell me what it means, what we should, how well, actually, we should, yeah, how should we take that? It means two different things, Larry, and they go together. Uh, one thing happens is, is based on the story of the book. It opens with some short profiles of people that you would recognize who have just typical problems. We have a person who's angry all the time, isn't precisely sure why. We have a person who feels very stressed. We have a person who, who's been betrayed in her marriage. We have a person who's being consumed by hatred because he was cheated and he can't get back at the person who did it. We have a person who feels trapped in their home to take care of their spouse who's gotten sick and, and doesn't look sick but is sick and so this, this wife feels trapped. We have someone who's lost a spouse and is not getting over that, and a person uh, with a minimal faith uh, who has just discovered that he's dying. And so all these people, by coincidence in the story, they hear about a talk being given by a local church, called Faith, We Have It Backward, and they go, because they're desperate for something. And they hear a vision of faith, an idea of faith which is different than they've heard before. It seems so very clear and, and almost obviously true, and, and it offers, it seems, so much to people's lives, so they like it. And they decide they need to talk to the presenter about their own thing, and, and he then applies that faith to their situation, and they find out that things were better than they believed, much better than they believed. Now, in addition to that, underneath that, uh, what we're talking about is a better way to believe, uh, trying to correct the idea that so many people have that faith is really, when it comes down to a wishful thinking. If I really believe this can happen, if I really believe God is there, God is listening, He's going he's gonna to hear my prayer and do what I'm asking, and, and when it doesn't happen, people are shook up. But if instead we can teach people to see the truth of certain basic things just because they look carefully, and even understand how right it is that how we should know about God and about what He's done and why we're here and why things happen and where we're going, well, then we really are believing uh, in a better, better way than ever before. We're seeing for ourselves, uh, which is so important today wow. in a world where we hear from so many people. I mean, you're doing programs every day. I'm sure you're going to have somebody in another month or so who's going to have a whole other idea about what life is all about. Uh, so we hear so much from people. They talk well. But they say different things. What, what do we do then? Only if we can show people where they can see it for themselves, then they're going to understand in a way they have confidence in, and then those ideas, spectacular ideas, can work for them and give them tremendous hope in their lives. 
and a sense of purpose that, that can't be is unassailable, and a tremendous source for peace, uh, starting with themselves. Wow. That, that, those are two senses, better than we believed in two ways. Wow, I, I love what you've said, and I want to hear more. I, I, but I, I want to tell you, you're, you're right about something. Yeah, we will. We'll have another person on the air who absolutely knows for sure that he or she is right about something that's theological. Sometimes it's, I mean, with my limited understanding of the Bible, sometimes it's in line with what the Bible seems to be saying, and sometimes, again, my limited understanding, it seems to be totally out of line. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that comes up a lot, though, and I want to and I want to tell you this, and then I'd love to, I can't wait to hear you reply. The movie The Secret has d brought us a lot of guests, not just from the movie, but people who imitating it or, or delivering the same message where all you have to do is is believe it'll happen and it will and my comment to that is isn't god part of that i mean is, is you're making it seem like it's just and i don't mean you sir father but mm -hmm. but but some some people make it seem like all i have to do is want it and and they don't even recognize god's role in that in other yeah. words god might not want you to have whatever it is you're wanting right and, and so that's part one of my comeback to that. And they always have some way of answering that. And then the other one is, if you absolutely believe it's going to happen, then it will. And they'll tell me success stories of the guy who won the Olympics or the person who won the lottery. And I'll say, didn't the other 999 million people also believe they were going to win? Yeah. <laughs> what, happened to, what happened to those people? Yeah. You know, so I, I love what you're saying because it sounds like we've got it wrong. Well, uh, I like what you had to say, Larry, actually. You're exactly right. Unfortunately, that idea that you just described, whether we call it a new idea because it's based on a new book, uh, you know, which is selling well, called The Secret, or, or whether it's just the, the ancient idea of faith, which is probably the one bad idea which is shared throughout all religions, and that is if you, if you pray hard enough or if you do the right rituals, if you say the right words, you're, you're going to get what you want, and that seems to be in, in the actual lives of people, their, their whole religion. And that really is a very superficial idea. Uh, what you said is exactly right. What about the other people who are praying like crazy for something and, and it didn't work out? And isn't it tricky, and, and maybe sometimes even consciously not nice, that people will, will, will preach this kind of stuff, they can fill holes by doing that, they can make all sorts of promises, and when it doesn't work out, you blame the person who was praying because you weren't really sure. How can you absolutely be sure of anything? as a matter of fact. So people always know that they weren't absolutely sure, that they were really just trying to, to wish hard. And when it doesn't happen, they blame themselves. Yeah. And, and, this, and, is sort of, this, is a, this is a trick that had been used for, for a long, long, long time. Now, what we were trying to present, particularly better than we believed, is uh, a way to believe which is better than we've had before, which is to understand that faith doesn't discourage you from expressing your hopes and your feelings to God. You have to, if you can have a relationship with someone, you have to talk to him or her. Otherwise, you don't feel connected. But in, in the bigger idea of faith is that it is our explanation of life. It's looking at life and perceiving that it comes from something greater, figuring out what that must mean, what that must mean about the source of all things, what that must mean about why we were made, what that must mean about what we can hope for, what that must mean about why we are here what that must mean about why things happen. And that vision, that vision of faith that you can see for yourself if you know where to look, and that's what Better Than We Believe this is, is out to help people to do. Oh, wow. That vision changes everything, everything. Because all of a sudden you realize that you are, for example, right now, up to this moment, a person that God's plan has made you to be with all his care, no less than he has put into anybody else. And when you catch on to that, you love yourself a little bit better, or maybe a lot better, and that means you're going to be more open to see the goodness in other people, love them, and keep growing. And, of course, we're trying to explain why that's really important in terms of your destiny, and so forth and so on. Uh, that, that's what we mean by better than we believe, not, not wishful thinking. I, not lo using I, that. I love what Go you're ahead. saying. I, no, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to comment that I love what you're saying. Do you know what? what I have a little story to tell you. <clears throat> One time when, you, when I was really young, uh, like 20, that's what I'm, when I say really young, I was working at a factory, and to, to get my, to my car, I had to walk across the parking lot, and the parking lot was recently paved, perfect blacktop just across the whole thing. And it was only down there for maybe a couple days. And as I got closer to my car, I saw a blade of grass growing through the blacktop. 
And I thought, boy, that blade of grass, because I was going through something of my own at the time, and I thought, that blade of grass has more faith than I do. It believed it can get through the blacktop. I need to believe I can get through whatever it is I'm going through, okay? Something, you know, not like blacktop. And then I thought, wait a minute. Maybe it's not that it believed it could. Maybe it's that it didn't believe it couldn't. Big difference, yeah. That's how I look. I, I took it to mean, you know, don't, don't always just wishful thinking. Just... Mm -hmm. Stop thinking that you can't is, is how I looked at it. Rather than thinking that I can, I'll just stop thinking that I can't. Well, sure. I mean, I think it's a great philosophy of life. And sometimes we sit together and we do discuss among ourselves how this is going to be really hard. And, and one of the ways we get past that is to say among ourselves, well, there's no way in the world we can do it if we conclude ahead of time that we can't, we have no chance. So the fact is, no, we may fail. But again, if our faith is strong and we realize that there would be a reason even if we fail... Our job is to do what we can see to do, mm. to do the best we can actually accomplish to do. That's going to work out anyway, so we're not afraid to fail. We're not afraid to not get what, what we're working for. We're going to do our best. We're going to certainly uh, do what we can with much less pressure, right. probably do much better, and, and so forth. Oh, sure. What, but again, the vision that we're... Go ahead. What, why do you think when we set goals, we either believe we can do them or we believe... We can't do them. And, and the perfect example is John F. Kennedy says, we will land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Everybody jumped on that and they said, because he set the goal, that's why we were able to accomplish it. Well, why couldn't we have a president who says, before the end of this decade, we will have peace on earth. We'll turn the Sahara Desert back into a, a wealthy land of, of water and rivers. Yeah. I mean, why couldn't we ha set a goal like peace on earth? Why, why are we always setting goals and believing in goals not that I have anything against the space program. I love space program. But you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like we don't want to believe that we can live peacefully. That would be a goal to me. Mm -hmm. it, except you probably get, you know, what do you call them? They kick a president out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> impeachment. Impeached, yeah. yeah. Well, since, you're, well, since uh, when, a person, when the president made that declaration, I guess, 40-something years ago, I mean, he'd been advised by technicians that, to a large extent, the rocket already existed and, and the computerization was on the way. And mm. it was, in fact, a feasible thing. We could, we could probably do it, as opposed to changing the hearts and minds of 7 million people, which would mean that we ourselves would have to make some compromises, some sacrifices of uh, things that we thought were really important to us because we were going to expect the same thing from somebody else, and we have a hard time trusting them the way they had a hard time trusting us, and, and so forth. It's just a much bigger goal. Um, so I understand what you're saying, but I think that uh, it really is apples and oranges. Okay. And the characters in the book, uh, they are so diverse, but it seems like they have one thing in common, that when something goes wrong, uh, they blame God right away, but then when things are going right and everything, they take the credit for it and they forget about God. About well, praising that's, him. That's, that was, well, that's certainly pretty human. When things are going right, you, you do feel very full of yourself, almost naturally. I mean, I don't think it's horrible, but it's natural. And, and therefore, full of yourself and, and what you've done and, and how your life is and where you're going and so forth. And when things go wrong, you realize that you weren't quite so powerful as maybe you thought. And you need something else to work for you. And that's when people turn to God. And I wouldn't necessarily think that's so terrible about people, but we certainly do advise people, please. Um, pray all the time. Ha ha have a life that's built on a certain amount of quiet each day. Quiet, spiritual reading, pardon me for mentioning that since I write spiritual books, but it's really very helpful to keep you focused on specific, wonderful, true things that do always change how you see what's going on in your life, how you're being treated by others, uh, the things you see uh, on television that you don't have, may never have, uh, the new wrinkle that showed up on your face and so forth and so on, mm. um, that always change how we see those things much, much, much for the better. And again, not because we want to, because we're wishing it, but because someone has helped us to know where to look or how to look at life, how to look at anything that's created and see that it was created and realize necessarily what that means and that how that applies to, to the fact that I exist and, and, and what has been my life and, and w what's going to happen and, and where I'm going to end up and so forth and so on. Um, that's, the, that's the vision. That's why I use the word vision in the subtitle to explain to people we're not talking about wishful thinking anymore. We're talking about helping people to see for themselves certain simple things that explain life as nothing else can, 
which are capable of answering the good questions that the people in the book, by the way, they, they come to this talk, they have questions. They say, hey, you're talking about this and that. Well, where is it God's plan when a baby dies? How is it God's plan when this happened to me? Is it God's plan that that person, for him, that he would hurt me? What's going on? People ask good questions. Right, sure. But I, think that the, I think that the readers, uh, better than we believe, will we'll notice that they're getting really good and straightforward answers. Wow, I'm and, loving... And, I'm the way that, and the way that it makes sense to them is that they are being asked to look at life in a much larger way than maybe they had before. But, but again, it doesn't take anything away from them. If they're willing to do it, all of a sudden they realize they get so much more from seeing things big than to seeing things small. It, it, it's, it's, to offer you to be sure that you're on your way to life with God is a pretty good thing to offer in exchange for not caring so much about that car. Because that car wasn't going to do it for you anyway. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that's how it works. The book is called Better Than We Believed, How to Apply the Vision, that is Faith, to the Struggle, that is, is Life. It is written by our guest, Father Robert C. Cormier, also known as Father Bob up in New Jersey somewhere. And it, it, so you've actually used the, the parable um, approach. You, you tell stories in order to teach something. Yeah, well, exactly. The idea is I, I've just been trying to get to share my faith with people for my whole adult life, and I'm constantly uh, analyzing how it's going. And you try different things, you try uh, works of art, you try, nowadays, the, the net, and if you don't mind, Larry, I'd like to make a quick plug for my website. Oh, yeah, definitely. Kind of, yeah. It offers all kind of free stuff anyway, but it's called thefaithkit.org. The Faith Kit as a single word, no spaces. And there's an enormous amount of material available to, to, to people, including whole, whole books, uh, that are available uh, for, for download, free, look at the, look onto the screen, works of art, music, uh, all kind of stuff. But anyway, to answer your question, um, obviously constantly trying to share my faith with other people and seeing what works and maybe what doesn't work, and I, and I just noticed over the course of life so far that when I simply sit down with a person and, and talk to them in plain speech and, and try to explain things, they catch it. And yes, oftentimes they do have a good question back, or I anticipate their question, and then I just answer it. And all of a sudden, you see it in their face, there's clarity. There, there, there's a hopefulness that, that they couldn't imagine when they came in, in some cases. Really? Um, so can you... And that is, it's happened, what it happens for myself, frankly, about 1,500 times a year in terms of individual <laughs> <laughs> So give us, let, let us be a fly on the wall if we could. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little scenario. Let's say I come to you and I say, Father, I just... I've been reading the Bible, and I know it says, have faith, the faith of a mustard seed. I'm stuck on that one parable, and I don't understand. How do I have faith at all? How do I have faith? What do I do? Well, the, but the answer is, I mean, the, the, frankly, <laughs> to, tell you, to be honest with you, what I do is I give people material that this book is based on. I say, here, this is, this is what I'm going to ask you to go home and think about. I'm going to ask you to just be quiet with yourself and take a look at anything in front of you in your, in your home, out your window, anything, and just let yourself experience what that means. And then think it through. Think this, and then think that, and then think that. Think it through, and you're going to see it. You're going to see it for yourself, and you're going to know that there's nothing out there that's going to contradict you. You're going to, you're going to see it with great security, because nothing out there, you'll, you'll, you'll know, is going to be able to come along and prove you wrong, what your experience is now telling you, because you quieted down and took a look. And basically, that's, that's what we do. And uh, whether it involves a whole book that applies itself to people's problems, some of the ones I mentioned, I, there's also a, a story in the book concerning depression, because I just experience that as a, as a cross for people all the time. Um, abuse, having been, some people have suffered abuse. Yeah. Um, trying to forgive infidelity, ask for forgiveness for infidelity, unfortunately, because it's just a human thing, happens all the time. Um, there's a story about a person struggling with drinking. A uh, person is struggling with the fact that her son has taken his life, and how does she deal with that? Forgive God, forgive herself, forgive him, and so forth. Um, and so what we're trying to do here is, is cover the basis with regard to almost every major problem that I deal with, except for the counseling of couples, because that's a little hard to write about in a book like this, because it involves steps. You meet with one, you meet with the other, and so forth. Uh, didn't didn't fit the same way. Although there is a reference in the book to where you can read about that on my website. Because but anyway, that's the idea. Because when people have these problems and they go through all of this stuff, sometimes they think it's only them and it's just affecting them, but it's not. It's affecting all of the people around them. If this is a parent that's going through it, it's affecting the children. It's affecting the spouse. Uh, it's it's even 
um, affecting their parents. So it's 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 not oh. just a single thing that you are trying oh, to point absolutely. out here. Well you, well, you got it just right, especially because you used the example of a parent going through something with their kids. Because I certainly heard, of, you know, listened to many, many tears over things like that, of course. And it really doesn't take people more than four seconds to notice that actually all my friends have the same problem. I mean, if there's any piece of advice I've given more in, in life, uh, in my life so far, is to ask parents, please understand, the things that are happening are not your fault. The fact is that never before in the history of the world has, has, have we as a human race passed through so much change in such amount of time. Look at where the world was in 1966 and then where it was in 1970, you know, pivoting in 1968. So mm -hmm. much in such a short amount of time that involved all of society at once, where all of a sudden everything that was wrong is now right, everything is right is now wrong. Uh, we are dealing with new factors that we never had to deal with before, like electronics, um, money to spare, and so forth. Of course, our, our, our human family is a little confused right now. And, and working through this is, is part of our great job uh, to get ready for life with God. But in the meantime, yeah, there are a lot of casualties. Hmm. And almost every parent feels that it's their fault, but no, it is not. It's not. As a matter of fact, not at all. You're, you were asked by God to do a hard thing, and that is to have a child in the 20, 21st century. And doing the very best you can to cope with things and, you know, and help us you know, in, in religion, to, to figure out how to teach people better, how to manage modern things, that's, that's your job. And, and, and God will have a purpose for all of it and loves your children more than you do. You, you can be sure of that, too. And please, it's just not your fault. Just keep doing your best, and it's going to work out. And there, there are so, and many, so many stories of people who have had hardships uh, in the Bible and, and even not in the Bible. Jo Job? Is, mm -hmm. that, is that the guy who lost everything? and? Um, yeah. Obviously, not in the 21st century. So it's, it's been part of the human experience, I guess, all along. Uh, better than we believe. Let me. I just went to the website, by the way. It is thefaithkit.org. Make sure you put the org, not the com, because yeah. I did the com and it just went to nowhere. Thefaithkit.org. You can get the book uh, Better Than We Believe there, and there are some other books as well as some other information. And uh, the information is written by our guest, and it looks like we have a phone call. You okay with taking phone calls? Oh, sure. Father? Okay, Father Bob is on the phone. Father Robert C. Cormier, good morning. You're on the air with Father Bob. Uh, Father Bob, I'm a uh, Catholic. I was wondering if uh, if you could uh, comment on the uh, poverty rates. I just got off the uh, Center for uh, Child uh, Poverty in the United States. has uh, not been this high since 1959. There are approximately uh, 16 million children living in poverty. How, what would be your take on that? I'll hang up and just listen. Thank you. Have a good morning, sir. Well, thank you for your question. Um, I don't think anybody who, who cares about anybody thinks that poverty is a good thing or that we shouldn't work as a, as a, as a society to make things better. I think, unfortunately, the issue is really how, how do we do it. Um, and, and, of course, there are certainly roles for government for sure in that, but my position, of course, is a little bit different. My position is to represent the role of faith in, in, what, in what we want to make happen. And one of my favorite expressions, it uh, doesn't occur in this book, but in several others, is that there is no substitute for faith. When you form people well, they, they get into less trouble. Uh, when you form people well, they have more responsibility to stick with stuff. When you form people well, they, they're not envious of what other people have. They don't need so much in order to be happy and so forth and so on. So I, I don't think it would be my position to comment you know, about the tax structure or different programs, except to comment locally about, and totally about what I see work and not work in terms of welfare and all. But what I really care about is doing what we can to form people better. Because when that happens, uh, instead of one problem multiplying into another, into another, into another, you get a whole other dynamic where this, this doesn't happen anymore. So less money for police, and that means less money in taxes, and that means more money in the hands of people, and that means more for this and more for that, and so forth. So there is no substitute for faith. I, I, I couldn't say that with more sincerity. Wow, wow that's so moving. Uh, Father Bob, uh, no wonder you're so successful, and, and your radio show is um, d being well-received. Do we have a way of hearing it here, or is it local, a local radio show? Well, only, only, only if you speak Spanish, it's in Spanish. Oh, your show's oh, okay. in Spanish. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, we have sp plenty of Spanish listeners. How how would they um, do that? Is it they online? can get it? They can get it. Well, they, well, they can get it. Uh, depends on where they are relative to uh, Atlanta, to Georgia, but they can get it anywhere in the world. It's internet based, so the station is called the Radio Inmaculada. People who understand Spanish can picture that word. It's again a single word. dot org once again, 
And I am on every Wednesday live from, uh, not this Wednesday, it's Christmas, <laughs> uh, but uh, normally on Wednesdays from uh, 1 Eastern time until 2. And um, there are no call-ins precisely, but people write in. And, uh, and I try to answer their questions. And, and in that case, these questions come in from, they tell me, from 49 different countries. Wow. wow, right. Radio Immaculata is how you pronounce it, dot org. Radio Immaculata. Yeah. Immaculata. Immac- exactly. Okay, I got it wrong. <laughs> to- totally wrong. But yeah. our Spanish <laughs> speaking, <laughs> our bilingual friends who listen to us and also speak Spanish got it. I'm sure yes. they got it. Yeah, here in Florida, yeah, we've got a lot of Spanish speaking people. Uh, Father Bob, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Have a great Christmas. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for having a holy, happy Christmas to you, too. Thank you. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Yes, George? I'm going to Devin's Self Storage. You mean Devin's on 200 across from Hobby Lobby? Yes. You know I have my own code to get in. If I have a question, I just call 873-0777. Didn't you just go there last night? Well, yes. They're open late. Didn't you go Christmas shopping this weekend? Yes. Then you went to Devin's Self Storage? Yes. George, what are you up to? Bye. George. Ready or not, the holidays are here. And if you need a great gift idea, then give bottles of local wine from Island Grove Wine Company. They're locally owned and operated, so you can go visit the winery for a true wine experience. Located just north of Ocala off Highway 301, you can enjoy free tours and tastings. Open weekdays from 10 to 4 and holiday Saturdays from 11 to 4. For more information, call 481-WINE. That's 481-W-I-N-E. And don't forget a bottle for yourself. Now is the time to take advantage of Florida Credit Union's CD specials. Our 36-month CD comes in at 1.26% APY, a 24-month that's working for you at 1.0% APY, and our 12-month at 0.75% APY. All CD rate specials require $10,000 minimum. With friendly service and rates like these, it's not hard to see why Florida Credit Union has your CD options covered. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Call 352-237-8222 for more information. Must act by 11514. Hi, Robin. You look tired. I am. I've been running all over town. Why? Why not drive? I need to get this stupid document notarized. Oh, that's easy. You need personal service. Duh. That's what I've been looking for. You need to go see Mark at the Personal Service Center. He can notarize that for you, make copies, fax it wherever, or send it out in the mail. Heck, he can even scan it and email it for you. Really? Where is he at? 2375 Northeast 25th Avenue, on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street. You can call him at 789-6683. Personal Service Center. Thanks, Larry. From our family of Ocala Utility Services to yours, wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. May you and your family prosper during the coming year, as well as our entire community. As a reminder, the city's business offices will be closed December 24th and 25th, as well as New Year's Day. Remember, many of your business needs can still be accomplished online at ocalafl.org. While there, check out our pay-as-you-go billing, energy-efficient rebates, conservation tips, and much more. Happy Holidays from your hometown utility, Ocala Utility Services. Cindy Nicholson and her staff at Mark's Prime Steakhouse and Seafood would like to wish you and yours a prosperous and happy holiday season. Don't forget, Mark's Prime has the perfect gift, the Mark's Prime Steakhouse and Seafood gift card just in time for the holiday season. Now, through December 24th, purchase $100 in any denomination of Mark's gift cards and receive a free $25 gift card. Gift cards are available at Mark's Prime Steakhouse and Seafood, or you can also find them online at MarksPrimeSteakhouse.com. When I started thinking about this year's Christmas greeting, I wanted to make it something meaningful. So here is my heartfelt wish for us all. Good health, prosperity, and the peace to be happy, whatever our circumstances. Remember the reason for the season. Merry Christmas. I do, I do, I do, I do. This heartwarming Broadway favorite takes a musical look at the marriage of Michael and Agnes and their life together over 50 years. They go through wedding night jitters, raise a family, negotiate midlife crises, quarrel, separate, reconcile, and grow old together. Ocala audiences are in for a unique experience as the original creators have reconceived the show to include a separate couple for each of the six episodes. I do, I do, I do, I do. On stage at the Ocala Civic Theater January 9th through the 19th. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. 
help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Yes, George? I'm going to Devin's Self Storage. You mean Devin's on 200 across from Hobby Lobby? Yes. You know I have my own code to get in. If I have a question, I just call 873-0777. Didn't you just go there last night? Well, yes. They're open late. Didn't you go Christmas shopping this weekend? Yes. Then you went to Devin's Self Storage? Yes. George, what are you up to? Bye. George. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. Are you wasting hundreds or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the industry's only termite and pest control package that never charges retreat fees, ever. You can get started today for only $99. This is a value of $500 or more. This includes treatments, installation of monitoring stations, quarterly pest control, and a lifetime guarantee, all for an unbelievable low $99. Even if you have another pest control provider, visit turnerpest.com to find out how you can avoid paying those high termite retreat fees. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA.